In the age of streaming boxes and smart TVs, just how do blind people navigate these devices? Well, some don't. In fact, my friend Tommy Edison doesn't use a TV whatsoever. He does have cable, and he does watch games and, and movies, but he does it all through a sound system. I'm sure he doesn't see a whole lot of sighted guests. Tommy is in fact a blind film critic, which is pretty cool, and he just listens to them. Much like smartphones and computers, smart TVs have an operating system, and an operating system allows you to navigate things, oftentimes with accessibility. Accessibility meaning letting people have access even if they have a disability. In the case of my Roku smart TV, it actually has a screen reader. I wouldn't say it's the most advanced screen reader, but it gets the job done. Audio guide enabled. Inaccessibility, audio guide, on, radio button, selected, one of you. Speech rate, button, five of seven. And what that allows you to do is basically have anything that's a visual uh, context, like menus and drop down bars, anything that you need read right aloud to navigate the screen, it does that. I was not the person though who set up the smart TV, so I don't know if in fact you need to have a sighted person set it up. I've never tried it, I haven't looked it up. If you happen to know the answer to whether or not a blind person set up a Roku device on their own, uh, let me know in the comments because I want to get schooled on that. But let's say if you have any ordinary TV that lets you just hit the power button and flicker through the channels. Well, maybe you want to turn that into a smart TV without investing into a smart TV or a brand new TV. You could get a streaming stick or a box set, like I personally have Apple TV 4K, I have no use for the latter. I guess the 4K version comes with Dolby Atmos and sound quality will matter to me. So right from the start of setting up your Apple TV, you can actually turn on the screen reader, voiceover in this case, just by triple tapping, just like on an iPhone or Mac, the menu button, which is the most prominent button that has an actual texture around it, a circle that kind of lets you indicate that, hey, this is the menu button, this is what you need to get back to the menu, or think of it as like a home button. Once again, by tapping that three times, it then brings up voiceover and you can navigate through the entire setup of the device without sight. Voiceover on, set up with device, button, one, unlock your iPhone, iPad, or iPod touch, two, Connect to a Wi-Fi network. The continuity of the gesture language is very much similar to how you would react to voiceover on an iPhone or Mac, anything along that Apple ecosystem that blind folks are already familiar with, if they use Apple products, of course. So cool, we have a way to actually watch content. We either have a smart TV or we have a smart streaming box. Uh, now what? What do we do? to actually get some content. Well, you might need to download some apps or you might need to uh, use the pre-installed apps to access services like Netflix, Disney+, Apple TV+, Hulu, Amazon Video. I guess every other channel also has its own streaming app. Oh my gosh, this is only gonna grow. This is, this is, I didn't, oof. It's gonna get expensive. So now that we have our libraries of content to start streaming, well, how does a blind person really enjoy that? And if you've seen my videos in the past, you might be familiar with a thing called audio descriptions, or maybe you've come across descriptive video. This is essentially a way that blind people can enjoy the visual elements of a film or a TV show, and it's, it's pretty neat. I, I'm a big fan of it and a big advocator for it because it just makes sense. If you can have the ability to multitask, especially like listen to a show, and drive. Now to look under the car, Matt rolls to the other side and springs up and onto the other man. Or listen to a show and do some work. You can literally get all the elements and not miss any context of your Stranger Things or your morning show or Jack Ryan. Is that, that was Jack Ryan, right? Jack Ryan. Yeah, I'm just trying to, Mandalorian, is that the other one? I'm just trying to hit every streaming platform, give them all a little bit of love. Um, what does Hulu have? So audio descriptions are cool. It doesn't interrupt the dialogue of most films and TV shows. It's meant to be a narration in between dialogue to help let you know the important narrative part. In her hut, Mocker digs beside the fire pit. You've come to the at last. And, and to help tell that full story, if you were to watch something with your eye closed or little to no vision or not even looking and paying half attention to what you are currently trying to enjoy. I think audio descriptions as a concept in general is very useful and beneficial for both visually impaired users but also sighted users too. So 
give them a try sometime. So does every piece of content have audio descriptions? Unfortunately, not yet. And down the road, I hope that we get there, but a lot of old films and, and, and uh, old TV shows or early seasons of shows from like the early 2000s or early 2010s oftentimes won't have audio descriptions. And this is just because it wasn't as regulated or forced upon the studios that have hundreds of millions of dollars to spend, but can't shell out a little bit for some accessibility apparently. Now they are, so I guess that's good. A lot of the original shows on Netflix and Amazon Instant Video and even Apple TV Plus, which is launching with eight different languages of audio descriptions, like that's kind of unheard of for a streaming platform. And that's for every piece of content that they're releasing. They're just gonna be straight up accessible. So oftentimes like Netflix might have audio descriptions for the native language of that region. As far as I know, at least in America they do. Let me know, maybe you use these streaming platforms in different countries. Do you have access that we oftentimes do with audio descriptions here? I'm curious. Obviously one show I've been watching is C on Apple TV+, Plus, which is all about giving representation to people and actors who are blind and visually impaired. Not every actor on the show is blind, some are, and it's trying to just represent blindness in this very humanizing way that it's, it's a thing, it's not going away. So over on my Twitter and Instagram, I did ask you to ask me questions about how blind people experience TV shows. What kind of curiosities that you have or experiences maybe in general that you had that you wanted to share with me. And I picked five questions here that I felt like can help um, shed some light on some curiosities. Andrea Lozell asks if watching live TV are commercials accessible as well for blind people to watch? Live TV. Uh, commercials typically are not audio described. Of course, luckily in the day and age of streaming, there's little to no commercials, at least depending on like what you pay for. I'll be honest, I haven't watched live TV in uh, many years since becoming an adult. Streaming service has really taken over and most of the ones that I pay for do not have ads or commercials. And for the ones that do, typically don't have audio described commercials. I actually directed a commercial. That one was audio described. So Aha, accessibility and advertising. That's also important if you wanna reach a wide audience. If you want me to consult on your commercial or campaign, I've got a link. Wrath.LA. Back to the question. Um, as far as I know, there are not described uh, commercials on TV. Again, I could be wrong. Rag G asks, how do you watch series or movies in another language? That is a good question. I don't really know in terms of a full length film that's a foreign film to English. I, that's, a, that's a good question. I know for some shows that have little inserts of dialogue that is in a different language, Oftentimes the audio descriptions will try to insert the subtitles that are on screen that are meant to be, again, read and translated by a sighted viewer. Uh, that will be read aloud by an audio describer, sometimes even bringing in an extra voice actor to differentiate the narrator to the um, translator slash like dubber. So I'm not saying it's impossible to do an entire foreign film with audio descriptions and reading the dialogue could definitely be done. I don't know if it has been done. I'm sure it's been attempted, but uh, I'm curious to know an example. If you have one, let me know. Elisa Terrestrial asks, are the choice of films and TV shows limited thanks to a lack of adaptions? Yeah. A lot of the networks and TV shows oftentimes won't have described uh, content based on maybe where you're trying to watch it, right? Hulu. Hulu just started catching up with getting some described content out there. So a lot of the stuff in their library is not described, and a lot of that's from major networks. Unless you're really looking for it, you probably might not find it, or you might just be nicely surprised that it has audio described content. At least that's how I am. I'm, like, I'm always kind of surprised if a, like a show that isn't original on Netflix has audio descriptions. Um, most of, again, The Office doesn't have it, except for the final season, for just one example. I think it's the same thing with Parks and Rec, where only a certain season and onwards has audio descriptions. Another example of undescribed content would probably be indie films. Indie films that only see a limited release, or even just major films that see a limited run, may not even be accessible. Heck, they might not even have subtitles. Like, I don't know, but I imagine that is a common problem. So for me, when I was younger, most of the stuff on VHSs was not described. In fact, I don't think any of it was. One thing, for example, is I tried watching Lion King when I was younger. This is just one example of many films I've missed out on, and I could only hear kind of what was happening. And that's a movie that unless 
it's described, a blind person may not follow completely. So as a kid, of course, when you're in school and they're playing movies and it's up on that cart, right? It's this tiny screen. For me, that was just like a little changing color blur that was so far away. For something like, again, Lion King, I've seen the new re-release that was like a live action. Live action didn't do much for me, but it gave me an excuse to go to the theater. And at the theater, it was described. So yeah, I got to experience Lion King. It was a fun, heartwarming story. After 24 years, James finally got to see Lion King. Teresa asks his audio descriptions for shows during their live broadcasts or only when they're available to stream on demand. Here in the US, at least certain shows are not gonna be audio described. Some might be, but networks, as far as I know, are only regulated to broadcast a certain amount of hours. Like there's a minimum hours that uh, they have to broadcast at least major networks too. If you can't stream a show, for instance, it might have audio descriptions on something like iTunes or Amazon Instant Video. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to Insightful Life. That's Teresa's blog. It's a website that basically covers some accessibility as well as like life as a visually impaired person. So uh, check that out. She's got some cool content up there, especially about Disney Plus and its accessibility efforts and, and their audio described content because I'm not a Disney Plus subscriber yet. There's still a lot of content for me to catch up on before I get onto another streaming service, but she's got a great list of content that is audio described right out of the gate. So be sure to check that out. Blind Vision Tactile asks, where can I find samples of audio descriptions? Do they tell you when someone enters the rooms even if they do not have a speaking part? I have some ideas on this. If you want to find some audio described content, just on YouTube itself, you can look up audio descriptions or try to type something in, maybe like a Frozen trailer with audio descriptions. I know that exists and that's currently up on YouTube. And for your follow-up question, again, it tries to only describe the important elements. So if someone doesn't have a speaking part and they're gonna walk into the room, will it describe that? If there's room to, and if they're important for the scene, yeah. But if it's just an extra who's walking by and trying to just fill the void for the sighted, pleasing eyes, no. It, it won't describe that. I hope that it kind of answers that question. Uh, again, check out audio descriptions for yourself and let me know how they are. I hope this video has been helpful in answering the question, how do blind people watch TV? Again, if people don't have access to the full use of one sense, well, usually there's another way to get that sensory input of that information, right? Again, if you can't see or have poor vision or have any other cognitive reason as to why descriptions would be useful, descriptions through the use of audio. It exists. Keep in mind, not all content is well described, so be sure to try and be an advocate for helping to petition for shows to have audio descriptions, for streaming services to provide descriptions and distributors to provide these streaming services with descriptions. It's all helpful as an ally if you want to just, again, help provide access to content for blind people. Um, make use of it and, and spread awareness of what audio descriptions are and, and how everyone can benefit from them. I hope you could see different today. I will hear you next time. Bye.